The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years. <laughs> and a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam McGuire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and welcome back to a very special Star Sport podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Mangan, and I'm joined as always by Star Sport editor, Kieran McCarthy. We have a very special show for you today. As you can see, we're recording this outside of the Southern Star offices. We're in Access Credit Union in Skibbereen today. Access Credit Union have been sponsors of the podcast for a long time, so thank you to them for hosting us today. And to celebrate, Kieran, we have not one, not two, not three, but four guests mm-hmm who are coming onto the show today. Go all, big or go home. That's exactly, exactly. And they've all been part of the O'Donovan Rosses All-Ireland Ladies Football Championship victory last year. The four guests are Derek Tobin, who's a selector with the team. We have Cork Minor and Defender Ali Tobin. Sinead Farrell, who's also a journalist at the 42, and forward Jessica Beechner, who just so happens to be an employee of Access Credit Union. So we've loads to look forward to on today's podcast. Access Credit Union will we'll, uh, give them a little bit of a plug just before we go any further though, Kieran, because they've been on, on board with the podcast for a long time now. And um, I guess we can vouch firsthand for their uh, commitment to the West Cork community. They've been brilliant sponsors of this podcast and also the Young Business Person of the Year mm-hmm. Award at the Southern Stars West Cork Business and Tourism Awards. And we know what great or how great a position West Cork Sport is in. And the connection that, um, that I guess the fact that we get to do a weekly podcast, not that many local newspapers or not that many regions like, mm. like West Cork do get the opportunity to showcase um, talents like we're, we're doing today. And Access Credit Union are a big part of the reason that we can actually do that. And um, it's just great, just great to have them on board in such a brilliant time for West Cork sport. 100%. The Access have been super sponsors of the, the podcast for the last couple of years. So, like you said there, Dylan, put on record our thanks to the team Tony has here and everyone involved in, in Access Credit Union because what you have is you have two very strong local brands. You have Access Credit Union here in Skib and you have the Southern Star as well. So you have two strong local um, brands coming together for the betterment of West Cork Sports. So having Access on board as our sponsors, it just allows us every week to tell the stories and the tales of the West Cork Sports people. And that's what this podcast has been doing since... I think it's January 2019 now, so we're, we're well into our, is it five years? It's, it's going strong. We've over, just have lost even count how many episodes we've now. We've 260, 270 or more episodes. And it's, it's all, 269 today, I think. There we go, like kind yeah. of almost 270 episodes. So that means this year we're going to hit our 300 episode, and it's going to be another incredible year for, for West Cork Sport. We think the Olympics are just around the corner. And here in Skibbereen, that we're touch wood, all going well that we will have celebrations in the summer as well. So to have, like I said, to have Access Credit Union and the Southern Star link up together for the Star Sport podcast is is brilliant and our, our thanks to them. And I, I think, and I could be open for correction here if any of our listeners can correct me, I think we're the only regional newspaper in the country that have a dedicated weekly sport podcast. And like I said, we've had it for the, for the, for the last number of years. So um, 269 and counting. Exactly. And our guests today, Kieran, moving on to, to them, we won't give them too long an introduction because I know everyone will want to hear from them. But they've been part of an incredible O'Donovan Rasa team, crowned mm-hmm. All Ireland Junior Club Football Champions last year on the 17th of December, I think it was. Celebrations haven't stopped since then. They were crowned the 2023 West Cork Sports Star Team of the Year at the West Cork Sports Star Awards. And um, as we'll hear, they're still celebrating, I think, that one. So it's been a, a brilliant year for them. It's been a super season for the, for the skip footballers. They might have to put a pin in the celebrations now because mm. at, at some point they're going to have to look to, to, to the 2024 season and their, their intermediate challenge. But the, the thinking behind talking to the Odunva Rasta today was, like you said, they were crowned West Cork Sports Star Team of the Year. They had their social a, a, couple of months, a couple of weeks ago as well where they celebrated their success. And it's almost just a 
to some of the final chapter in this incredible year that they had. They're the, the Skibbereen team that lost the county final in 2022, but rebounded in style last year to win County, Munster and All-Ireland. An incredible year. It's 30 years since Skibbereen won an All-Ireland title. Now they, they have a ladies team to go alongside their history-making men's team from, from 1993. So we just felt it was a, just a really nice fit. We're here in Access Credit Union in their, in their building, their big boardroom. And I'm getting quite comfortable here. I can see okay. myself um, kind of moving out of the star office into this comfy boardroom in, in future if I can get away with it. But I just felt it was a nice fit just to have a chat with some of the, the local people involved in, 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 in Skip's success. And I'm just for just a quick um, shout out to, to Jessica Beach, who we're going to hear from quite soon. She works here in the Credit Union. So I hope Tony Hughes is listening to this, the, um, the man who runs the Access Credit Union here, because she spoke to us on her lunch break. So I, I think she deserves to be let off work early someday this week. So that, that, that's, my, that's my call out for Tony if he's listening to the podcast. Give, give Jessica, let her finish up, give her a half day someday this week. Because, you're, like um, the, you're like the priest coming in to, to visit the school, giving everyone homework off. That, that's exactly it. So instead of homework off, give Jessica a half day. So that's why if Tony's listening to this, I'll, we'll see how that works out. But no, it was just super to, to catch up with the four of them. It was a great chat and a great reminisce about a, a great year for Skip. Absolutely. Let's hear from them now. So we're here now for a very special Star Sport podcast. We're in the, the buildings of Access Credit Union in downtown Skib. Access are our sponsors of the podcast for the last number of years, so it was great to take the show on the road. And we're joined by a couple of members of Skib Reen's all-conquering Odunabur Massa ladies football team by Derek Tobin, a member of the management team, Ali Tobin, a star defender, Sinead Farr, import from Longford, who's going to make a big impact this year, and Jessica Beechner, who's a, a starting player on the Skip team who had the shortest walk to the to the podcast today because you work here in the building, Jessica. So I know you're on your lunch, so we're not going to keep you too long. So I'm going to come to you first. The celebrations that followed the Skips of Ireland win in in December um, rolled on into Christmas. You had a great Christmas, rolled on into the new year, rolled on into January when you were called West Cork Team of the Year and you had your social only a couple of weeks ago and that was another good night. But it's so important to celebrate moments like this, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Like um, we might have made three months of it, but it's been good crack, and it's been very good. And it's important to all our hard work to that it finally paid off, and we got to enjoy every moment of it. What was the highlight of the celebrations for you, so? Um, I'd say probably coming in on the open top bus, coming down North Street, looking at the crowds of people out there, even though it was pissing rain. Um, but it was it was great. Like Derek, like that was an incredible night for everyone involved in the Southern Ross team, but. You had the dream season, but this is a story very much in the making over the last couple of years. But can you put your finger on what was the difference between the dream season you had in 2023 and what had happened in 22, 21 and so on? Yeah, I think we're probably, look, we're building through the last couple of years, you know, getting up through the grades and stuff. And the other thing was that, like, it was actually a very young team. Mm -hmm. So, like, a lot of the girls, like, we'll say, you know, the core of the team were still only coming out of minor, you know, 19, 20, 21. So that there was no... When there was no adult team before them, it didn't give a chance to, you know, there was no one to kind of learn from. There was obviously a couple of girls came back in from, from other clubs and things like that as well, to, you know, they would have played, you know, older players or whatever. But, but like, they, they kind of had to learn on their feet kind of thing. So probably that, that bit of maturity, I think, came to our game this year that probably wasn't there maybe the year or two before it. And it definitely, it definitely helped us along the way. Like. And how, how did you find their the response? Go back to 2022, Skib lost the county final to, to Neva Bon. But for the, the group to pick themselves up again and to come back in such style last year, could you could you sense that that the, the that the hurt and pain of that county final defeat in twenty twenty two that that was harnessed in a very positive way last year? Yeah, I think even when we when we had a meet in the start of the year, you know, you could see, you know, by the girls' first couple of ses sessions in that they were you know that they meant business kind of thing like and you know I think the big thing was like that you know the whole group the positivity that was there among the group by year was was phenomenal like you know and like. Just examples like you know to, to work great for each other like you know just perfect example there like Sinead, Sinead came on board new girl into the club playing very well unfortunately got injured mm -hmm. Sinead and stats the rest was for the rest of the year then for the All Ireland you know what I mean so that'll tell you what the, the whole group I think that just the whole ethos of the group was you know they were there for each other all the time I think which was a big thing like you talk about the kind of the, the young players coming up and you're one of the one of the young players in this Skipperine team how much did you enjoy last season yeah no, it was brilliant even playing with like above your normal age because you get support from older girls and it's just great the challenge. I have to ask you as well Ellie about this Skibbereen defence okay the forwards they always get the headlines they get the scores but the Skibbereen defence last year the backline was, was incredible all, all the way through 
think back to the quarterfinal against Glasgow Gales, I think you only coughed up, was it two goals against Gusseray and over here in Skip in the All Ireland semi final? I think they only got six points, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even the All Ireland final against Clare Barnes, they only scored 11 points. Uh, so, like this, give defence Christine Fitzgerald. Yeah, behind you, you you're in the full back line. What was it like playing in a in a defense like that? It was brilliant, like the way we worked together, and you know if you went for a ball, there was someone behind you covering all the time, and vice versa. You did a bit of experience beside you, Michelle Donnellan. She'd be on I the. Did, yeah. I'd be very kind to you. She's on the upper age of the. If we're talking about the, the yeah. age profile of this team, but and then you the likes of Lisa Hart and so on. Like it's it's a very strong back line. Yeah, no, and we had a bit of everything. We had pace, we had defended, and then we had like. Fiona and Lisa, Sarah, who all played in forwards last year, and they did really well then when they came into the backs and added a different and dynamic. I, mean, I mentioned there, Ellie, the semi final over in, in Rossa Park. They play in an Ireland semi final in your hometown in front of a, a huge crowd and to get a positive result. And even to see afterwards, the, the, the being applauded off the pitch, like how, how special a moment was that for everyone? It was brilliant that, like, even all the younger age groups of the club, they were all over watching, friends from school and everything, everyone came. So it's brilliant. And Sinead, you're the, you're, you're, you're the, the kind of the, the import from Longford. You've been in Skib now for a couple of years and you joined up with the, with the ladies' football team here in Skib last year. Unfortunately, you got an injury, I think, in the Bentry Blues game that sidelined you for the for the rest of the of the year. But from an out, outside perspective, and you're a journalist yourself, you know the ingredients of a good sports story. And this is a story that kind of has it all. The, the skip team that lost the county final the year before, but came back to win everything the following year. Yeah, uh, I only joined actually last April. And I didn't really know much about the team. I think I might have seen like Bunton before the previous year's county final, but I wasn't really sure who they were or what the team I was that I was joining. I think I was, I had to buy, like I hadn't played football in years, so I had to go buy boots and all like gear. I hadn't, I never thought I'd have to do that. I thought I'd be kind of finished with football, but then I had a bit of time last year, so I'd, and I needed to kind of get to know people in the area. So that was really the main reason I joined. And I remember like chatting with someone in the Howlands about the team, because I was afraid like, is this going to be a bunch of teenagers now that I'm not going to be able to, like relate to them and they'd be a bit counterintuitive to join a team that like much younger people but like no she was saying like it's actually a fairly varied age group and like from the first couple of training sessions you know you could kind of sense like there's a fairly handy team here even though the numbers probably weren't great at the start because you're a bit scattered like your girls yeah. traveling uh the likes of Ali, Ava, Laura were still in Cork we didn't see them for a few months uh, and even from my point of view trying to get to know a group it takes actually months and months to really get to know everybody. Even the start of this year now, I'm starting to see new faces again that like maybe weren't involved last year. Like the girls, because they've grown up in Skip, they know them all. Mm-hmm. When you're new to the area, it takes a while to to get to know everybody. But like we've had a great like response with the R. Like I think we had we had about twenty one people to train the the first night. Um, and you might maybe might, mightn't get that in other clubs but like that's what success can do to bring more people in and um, get them joining the team but no they're like you could definitely sense like there's a there's a good there's, there's strength in every line like there's no one weak player in the team and like you could see that like the other final probably wasn't our best game but we were still the better team you know I'd say Gus was probably our best game and that's from just from what I could see on the sideline but that's the the kind of talent that's that's in the area that I got to see over the last couple of months. And Derek said there, and Sinead, like, even though you were injured, you were still, you did stats for the year. So um, was that important for you just to stay involved in the group all, all, all the way through? Yeah, definitely. Like, I know it's it's not obviously easy when you get the, the word that you've torn the cruise ship because um, that's it then. You're gone for nine months plus whatever it waits before you get to have your surgery. So, uh, no, like before the lads even asked me to do that, I, I wanted to stay involved because it's, it's not good to just walk away from a a team before the end of the season regardless of your own circumstances and I always saw this as my setback not theirs like I was still very new to the team and new to the club so it was always my own thing to deal with rather than the, the team itself and I wanted to stay involved and then I think it was before the I can't remember what game it was Derek asked me to to do it and that did definitely makes you feel more included like you know that like I'm going down a different road now compared to the team they have to move on and play and train you can't be a part of that I tried to like maybe like before surgery I had to like strengthen up your my neck my leg and my knee so there's lots of exercises you have to do I tried to like time my session so that I would be training in the gym and they'd be out on the pitch but even that 
you know, you, you still don't feel as included as you'd like to be. I'd have to maybe start my sessions a little bit earlier so that I could go out and watch the last bit of the set of the train and so that you can feel part of the group. And I was able to do that for pretty much all of the build up to surgery. But then I could, I knew afterwards uh, with the new exercise I'm going to be doing, I'd have to join the gym uh, up in the community centre. So that's when I could really feel like I was quite separate from the group yeah. with my own training. But being able to go to the, the matches and being able to do something on the sideline definitely makes you feel more included. And I just, I did, like there are conflicting feelings. It's, it's difficult, you know, when you're not allowed to play, but it's very hard not to get swept up in it as well, especially with the way they won it in the other the final and the big crowd we had, there was four supporters buses, I think, left Skib that morning at like five, six o'clock. You know, to get up that early to have to go up to watch a match in Dublin is hard enough, but like that's how much support the girls gathered and brought the whole community behind them. Parnell Park was full of red and white and when you see everybody out in the pitch and grown men crying, it's hard not to, to get swept up in that, even though you're not involved the way you want to be. There's still some connection there, and you do. It's I, as I say, it's the, I picked the best and worst year to to join the club, um. But you know when you come back and you like Jess was saying there in the open top bus, like the streets were packed. And, like the town never looked as big to me anyway. I mean I'm still new to the area, but you know you, you really feel you know that you're part of something historic, and and that's something like it. You know that that's something you have to take your your positives from your situation, even if it's not exactly how you want it to be. And Jessica, that, that's a great point that you made right there about the, I suppose, the connection between this team and the town. And we saw it all the way through, you mentioned the homecoming there, the home semi final against Crossaron. Could, could you feel that yourselves that the, the town was really getting behind you? You would drive into Skib on a, whatever morning it was, and there was there was flags, there was buntings, there was pellets painted uh, painted red and white, kind of flags in the roundabout. But you could really see the whole community, the town, did get behind the team. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was, it was great to see like the bypass cover. Yeah palettes painted by young girls, 12 and 13 years old. And it's just great to see women's football getting the recognition that it deserves as well. And it, it helps you drive on. And like we did it for the community as well, like to know that knowing that there is bosses of supporters who have no connections to the team, but they just wanted us to succeed. And they're coming always up to Dublin to watch the game. It, it, it was great, it's a great feeling. And even go back to Parallel Park for the All Ireland final against Clare Boris to see that skid crowd up in the stands. Like, what was that feeling like? Especially going down the whole street when the game was in the melting pot. Yeah, no, it was great in fairness. And I think in the last five minutes, there's a chant, Ross, that's Ross, and that really, like, you know, we were kind of saying, geez, we can't leave this behind us. Like, you know, all the people that had turned out for it. So, no, in fairness, that does really help you and it drives you on too. Like, Derek, you're on the sideline, obviously, for those final couple of minutes. <laughs> Clare Morris edged ahead. What were you thinking? Yeah, dude, got it. God, I was here there for a while to be honest. Um, like I suppose, like the, the big thing, like com like from the girls' point of view as well, is that they never panicked. Do you know what I mean? They just kept poised and stuff, and there's gas there. Like you know, small little things that you take into like, like Christine, like rolling her ankle and stuff. But Tara and Christine had done a lot of work to two goalkeepers together. In fairness, like, and we actually we work in a kick out on a on a high press on the Wednesday night of training and like. Tara probably executed the kick out that Christine couldn't, and that was the kick out that was one that the goal came from. Do you know what I mean? Like it's guess how these things like you know we were there training, we were just watching the two of them in the winds tonight, and it was just you know she just being it out to the wing, and that was the the kick out where the ball you know and like in fairness look Kate won a great ball inside, you know and and just popped it Dave and like in fairness she 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 three to beat or four to beat or something but she done the business like you know but but I mean in fairness like you know I thought like it was. Even they, they, they put a high ball in then a couple of minutes after that. And I think if my memory serves me right, I can remember it was, it was either Emer or Ali. Like, does, does that, I think one of, one of you broke it, and the second one of you, I think it was Emer picked it up then. But she, she was so close to getting actually done for overcarrying, but she got a little hop inside in the middle and just enough to break the tackle. And we were cleared in and we were gone, that kind of thing, you know. So it's small things like that that, you know, like sometimes I know you can say the stars are aligned or whatever, like kind of thing, but. Um, you know, like the girls, you know, they kept their composure and stuff, like, and in fairness, all through the year, like, you know, the trip to Glasgow and everything, like, you know, everything they had to do, they were fierce professional about what they'd done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they prepared themselves the best way they could, like, to know that, I mean, that could have been a banana skin in Glasgow, but they couldn't have got the job done and, and got home again in, like, 24 hours, like, you know, kind of thing, like, so that was, you know, but, um, I mean, in fairness, like, even there was, there was other games, the first round of the Munster above them tip, Came up against very strong tip side, like you know, a big physical team, 
and there was there was bits of that game that we just kind of struggled. We weren't playing our best, but at the same time, they just kept up away. It's you know, and they 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 found a way to win. Like you know, and look, I mean, you talk about panels. Like it was you know, our impact on the bench was brilliant as well all year. Like and, and stuff, and it was great to see girls that were you know nearly to be carried off at forty minutes because they had a job done, and you someone fresh to come on to do the same thing as well. And that's you know that that was a big part of it too. I think. And you're right, you're right, Skip found a way to win every game and obviously found a way to win the final. So for Ali to be on a team that would have had on a final a few to be part of the venture team, how, how special is that like as a, as a, as a moment for you? I oh, sure it's what's huge, like, you know, in fairness, like, you know, and you look at, you know, there's three or four of the girls there that even, I suppose, when, when, when Ali and them started off underage and stuff, they were watching Jess and them at six, you know, 15, 16 minor kind of thing. And that they were the, they were the adult team at the time because they were the oldest team in the club, you know. And it was kind of building away along then and stuff. And you know, I remember chatting with girls over and I suppose the first year I was probably involved with maybe five, four or five years ago, the first year I was involved with you. And they were saying, you know, we'll eventually probably play with the girls and it'll be think three or four years later that they're winning all learning together, like you know, how how fast time flies and stuff, you know. But ah uh, look, it was I mean, it was great in fairness and you know, like you know, credit to the rest of the gang at home. They kinda of left us, you know, they they kept everything going while we were out four or five nights a week kind of thing and stuff, but it was um Oh, that's brilliant and like you know you see the younger kids you know looking up looking up to these the same way as the girls looked up to the older girls when they were you know when, when i was involved in them underage you know you see that coming through now again mm -hmm. in the next generation and stuff and i mean in fairness the work that's been done down through the groups underage and stuff has been exceptional in the last couple of years you know which all the way through in fairness kind of thing and you can see you know it's, it's coming through there's talent coming through every year which is great to see like What's like at home? So Eddie, is, is it all football talk or does he park the football talk after training or? It's football talk or we try to park it a bit, but <laughs> keeps coming around in conversation, all right. But it must be great for you at home to have that source of knowledge just just, just, a, just a couple of couple of steps away. Yeah, I know, it's great after games and whatever, sure. We have our fights over it, <laughs> but it's good, yeah, and you knew you know where you went wrong a bit and someone honest to talk to about it. Derek, see, see how good Ali is on the pitch and how good a defender she is. I'm going to hazard a guess that Ali wins the fights if there's fights at home. Yeah, yeah, was, was, she's a black belt in martial arts, so you don't bother with her. I can't think that way, I can't think. But, um, I like that, no, in fairness, like she's, you know, she's, she's, she's an exceptional year, like, you know, which is brilliant, like, you know, and, you know, I suppose, look, as a parent, you're, you're, you're very proud to see your child playing and stuff, kind of thing, but, like, sometimes it's hard to keep the coach and the parents separate and stuff at times, like, kind of thing, like, and, like, I suppose it's more from a kind of, you know, you you be looking out and you kind of expect the eleven out of ten there, whereas everyone else is giving ten out of ten. They're happy enough, like kind of thing, like you know. So that that's probably it's a kind of a ah, but look in fairness, no, we we get on pretty well most of the time, like you know. Okay. brilliant. You're obviously at the Cork Miners well this year, so you're you've you've quite a busy schedule and yeah. fitness in as well with the Cork Miners for yet right now in the Winter Championship. Um, so we have we're playing Limerick this weekend and Tip the weekend after, and then we've won three of our games, so it's. Round Robin and top two going to the final. So hopefully, if we get over the line in our last two games, we'll be there. It's like football all year round for you at the moment. You've just rolled off yeah. skipping in our and you're straight into the, yeah. the minor yeah. setup. So, how, how much you enjoyed that? Yeah, I know it's good. And it's even the different girls from different clubs, like you have the Glenmire girls, the one All Ireland Intermediate, and other clubs as well. It's great playing with different people. And talking about the calendar, has it stopped rolling? She made the intermediate championship notes a couple of months away, but this is 2024. Um, it's a new season, skipper up intermediate. You want to get back in the pitch, touch wood. Hopefully, we'll see you in the skip jersey this year. How much are you looking forward to playing again? Yeah, I'm nearly five months now after mm. surgery, so I'm actually back training with the team, just doing straight line running, which actually is brilliant. I've been able to put on gear again and be back out properly with the group. It's not quite there yet, even the first session I went to like I had to I could only do a bit of the warm up and then I had to peel off and do my own skip my own uh, drills and I could feel it in my shins it was really killing me just being back on that surface again but it was a good reality check to get because it's been going so well in the gym I needed something to remind me that like there's still a good bit to go there's still another four months left Um, I think if the championship starts in July I'll be just kind of coming back in then um, hopefully all going well I have to go back up to Santry now in two weeks for what they call a strength test they basically just like get a better idea of where you're at they kind of compare one leg with the other and see it even in the different muscle groups and which your knee itself but um no I, like thankfully everything's gone well so far the surgery went well like look I, I was unlucky to get the injury but i'm very lucky with the with the way the recovery has gone like anytime i've tried to progress things the knees responded well so hopefully 
no surgeries in 2024 and uh, be able to get back in playing maybe a few 10, 15 minute games in June before hopefully getting back in in July. But I, I, I kind of would prefer nearly another month to build back into it because mm. like you said, they're going up to intermediate. I'm, I'm still kind of becoming familiar with the, the club scene here, so I don't even know what the standard will be like or what, but like, like Junior's pretty decent, like and um, Cork itself is a hard county to, to get out of, like, so we'll have our work cut out for us, regardless of who's going to be there with us. You've set yourself a nice challenge today to, to win a place in the All Ireland winning junior team. Yeah, yeah, and it won't be, I, I mean, I, that's a very strong team. As yeah. I said before, there's not one, there's no weak link in the chain. Like, even, like, girls who were lucky not to start this year, like, like Eco Driscoll, um, Tara, like, I was, I was so happy for Tara when she came on and, and did well for us in the final, because, you know, no more than Ali, young girl about 16, 17, coming into an all Ireland final, a lot of pressure on you, you know, they're pressing, Claire Morris were, were really like on, on top of us at that stage. She made a great save at one stage then, and you know, to make your mark like that on a team, like no one's gonna drop their place for anybody. Um, and that's a, a, like it's a team everybody wants to be playing on because of the success that they've had. And the big girls coming up from the, the other, the under, underage grades as well, so like, I, I knew myself when I was trying to like make my way into the team or like training with the team that like even if I got a place it'd be hard kept so that's all that hard work is waiting for me again hopefully if I get back fit. Intermediate Jessica, what a chat with you ahead, some, some, some big teams in there, how much are you looking forward to test yourself at that level? Oh, it'll be, it'll be, I'm looking forward to it, like it'll be challenging alright but I'd say intermediate's no joke like you know obviously we had a great year last year, we were successful did the best we could, but like I feel like in intermediate we a different ball game now, so we'll just have to take every game as it comes. But you can take so much confidence off what you achieved in 2023 and also take the momentum off it too. Like you won every championship game from County, Munster and All Ireland. So that does give you like to talk about that snowball effect, like you'd hope to take that momentum through to this year as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. And even the four training sessions we've had, they've been very positive and like everyone's buzzing, you can see everyone's happy to be back, you know, no one was complaining or about like our fitness might be a bit better this year or even sharper than what we were last year. So like hopefully now we just bring a positive attitude to championship and like go our way. Before we finish up there, I want to ask you about it was a point where I'm not sure which one of you raised it, but almost for the for the younger generation in the club to be able to look up now and see all Ireland winners and some as young young as Ellie. But this is super for, for the whole club, even, even, even the boys' side as well, just to see there's another All Ireland title in the town now. And it just kind of it shows that there's a pathway from Skibbereen up to, up to the up to our All Ireland wins. Yeah, I suppose looking like people say, I was the cliche, people say winning is, winning is infectious kind of thing, and there's you know, kind of thing. But um, like, I think just you know, when you look at the, the numbers, like, like in fairness, I, I was just went over last Saturday morning, no, the under 13 girls were playing game over and stuff and like the standard they were playing was, was brilliant, like to you know in fairness to give them their credit. And like you're looking at that all the way through, like you know, you look down to, to like to some of the younger teams like we said sixteens and stuff was success last year as well, you know. Um like you know it's been very good like kind of thing and stuff. And you can see the lads, I mean the lads are after a good start as well, that kind of thing, you know, that couple of underage, they won under twenty one and stuff there, which was a you know a good stepping stone mm -hmm. for them as well, kind of thing. Like but um I mean, in fairness, look, we've, you know, from the guards' point of view, like, we've been very lucky because anything we've ever wanted, pitch-wise or anything, we've, we've, we've been given access to it and stuff, which is, which is a great, you know, from, you know, to, to, it's a great starting point for anything, any team, really. And, um, like, you know, like Jess said, in fairness, you know, the, the last couple of nights there, like, you know, training's been good, like, and it's been, you can see that they're, they're definitely starting from a higher point mm -hmm. than where they were at the start last year, which is, which is good, like, kind of thing, and... It's just to keep everyone fit, I suppose, and keep everyone, you know, and, and learn from, I suppose, learn from last year as well, like, you know, that you're going to be up intermediate, like, you know, it's, it's a slightly higher standard, obviously, but you kind of have to learn from, you know, where we can improve on as well, like, you know, like, you know, in fairness, we got a lot right last year, without a shadow of a doubt, like, anything, but, um, you know, we can, we can, we can improve on that and, and to go a step further again, I think, so that, you know, it'd be great to, if we can do that going down the road, like. Super, that's the plan for 2024 to step, uh, step further. Just to finish up with a couple of quick questions, right? Because even though we covered the Denver Ross ladies in the star so much, we and you all featured in the pages, it's time to get to know you all a small bit better. So just a quick game of teammates, right? Um, I'm going to throw you to open to anyone. So who, who's the fastest in the squad? Fionn Leonard, I'd say. Be, be, between yeah, herself and Lisa. Laura, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Laura as well, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're we giving it yeah. to Laura. 
Yeah, 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 yeah I suppose, yeah. 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 Who's the best engine? Trainer. Trainer, yeah. Trainer. Keep going on there. Yeah. First, who would be first to training? Vanilla. Yeah. 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 You know, to the other side, of it, who's last to training? Who, who <laughs> you take to the team? The joker in the back. There's a few. There's a few there, right? Um, Sarah Hurley. Oh, that's yeah. it, sprung to my mind as well. Yeah, Sarah Hurley being went there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Jess can be a bit of a rogue there at times as well. Yeah. <laughs> so you're spoiling away in the corner. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get the head down. Last minute, last minute of an All Ireland final, skipper two points down, you win a penalty. Who do you want to take that penalty? Yeah, we have to be able, able I think, yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Who would you let choose the music in the dressing room? Caleb <laughs> And who is the best person song, sing song? Well, we'd have to say Lisa, even yeah. though yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 Lisa gets a lot of the yeah. fairness like Lisa's it. Lisa's yeah. building a reputation for her. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and who could give the, the best rendition of the old Skibbereen? Matthew, 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 Matthew. Matthew. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time no, out for, for chatting the podcast. Um, congrats again on an incredible 2023 season and all the best for, for the year ahead. And like you said at the social a few weeks ago, hopefully we see Skib up in Croke Park later in the year. Touch nice. Yeah, to be nice. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you by Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, funding dreams for over 50 years. Welcome back to the Star Sport Podcast. And I just want to reiterate as we close out this episode, our thanks to Access Credit Union, where your bank really does matter. So choose credit union, choose local, choose community. And Kieran, just a quick look ahead to this week as well. The Southern Star is in shops again on Thursday. What can people look forward to? Yeah, another packed sports section on Thursday. Some of the highlights are the Beamish Cup final is on up in Turner's Cross on Sunday. It's Clannock Hilty Soccer Club against Drina Rangers. Two of the heavyweights fighting it out for the league title. They now meet in the big cup final. So we've interviews with Barry O'Driscoll Hawthorn from Drina and from Paul Daly from Clannock Hilty. Also, the West Cork Rally is going to roar into Clannock Hilty this weekend um, for the first time ever. It's a three-day event, which is huge for the, for the West Cork Rally. So Martin Walsh has a super two-page preview in this Thursday Southern Star. Um, we also have a kind of a deep dive into the Cork Ladies footballers at the moment. They're, they're staring relegation from Division 1, if we're being quite honest. They have a crunch game away to Dublin on Saturday afternoon. So we're just looking at the, at the player drain off the back of the O'Sullivan sisters. Kira and Devon have both retired from Intercounty. Roisin Feeling has gone as well. So there's a huge turnover in the Cork Ladies football team. So we're, we're um, having a, a quick look at what that the impact that's had on this Cork team. And another highlight is John Hayes in his weekly column is reminiscing about his team holidays, or, or sorry, his training camps with the <laughs> with the, the Cork senior football team in his time there in, in the noughties and back to his first camp in 2005 when he had the chance of going on a, on a sun holiday with the Carby footballers that won the county the year before or on a training, a training holiday with the Cork footballers. He made a phone call to Billy Morgan. He was told, you're on the plane today with the Cork footballers. And that's when the phone stopped. So it's um, it's, it's well worth to read, yeah. So there's, there's loads in this Thursday's Southern Star. And just a quick shout out to the two men in the background here today. You can't see them. Sean Holland and and, and Tony here as well. They're, 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 they're like the brains of the operation. We're, we're, we're the face of it here, Dylan. Yeah, but we, with, with Tony and Sean here, they're the... They're the, it's teamwork makes the dream work, really. Exactly. And between the four of us, we managed to, to get something going every week. So thanks to the two lads again. And thank you again to Access Credit Union for their sponsorship of this podcast. So the Southern Star, as Kieran said, will be available in shops across West Cork from Thursday morning. But it's also online via our e-paper. So you can head to subscribe.southernstar.ie. You can get the, Southern, the Star Sport and the Southern Star for less than two euro per week along with full access to our website as well so as always thanks for listening to the star sport podcast we'll be back again next week here with episode 270 and if you've enjoyed this please remember to rate review and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts thanks for listening